Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought now would be a good time to talk about media management. And what I want to do is I want to talk about media management from the standpoint of once your project is done, how you're going to go through and clean it up to free up a bunch of space on your hard drive. And I want to get into the core of media management inside of Media Composer and Symphony, and that is the media tool. And I want to explain to you exactly how the media tool works so that you're going to get the most out of it and get the most out of cleaning up your projects to free up space for new projects that you have coming in. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. You'll see that I have a project here and I have some of my elephant footage here. And I know that all of these clips have video and audio with them. Now, how do I know that other than the fact that I shot all this footage? Well, again, easy way to tell what tracks you have or what tracks you've imported or captured for each clip. You can actually take a look right down here when you double click on a clip and it's going to show me that I have video and two audio tracks. Now, what's going to happen when I put together a timeline, and we're just going to put together a very short one, but we're going to want to, you know, imagine that this is a you know, timeline that's an hour long, and we're going to want to get in and clean stuff up. So, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add some edit points in here. We'll just hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Just drop another one in here. Sure, we'll hit B. Just come up here. Sure, why not? Get the little zoom in here. There we go, looking good, and I'm just going to hit B here. Okay, so we now have three clips in our timeline, and what I think I'm also going to do here is I'm going to add in a couple of dissolves, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to render these dissolves, and that's fine. We'll send them right here, 30 frames. Let's maybe make them, I don't know, 15 frames, and we're going to apply it to all the transitions. I'm just going to say Add. Now, because the dot on the effect is green, that means that I don't have to render it and it should play back in real time. Now what I'm going to do here, just for the purposes of me playing this back, I'm just going to mute the audio just so that it doesn't blast into my headphones here. And You'll see there we go, it plays back in real time, but for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to do a clip and I'm going to say render into out, just so that I can have these for when we talk about cleaning things up. And what I'm also going to do here is just create a new video track by pressing Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And let's add in a new title. What we're going to do, just navigate to new title under the clip drop down. Give Symphony a second here to prompt me. I'm just going to use the title tool. And we're just going to say fun at the zoo. Even though we are not at the zoo, we're just going to call it that anyways. Of course, back to my favorite font here, Impact. There we go. Just going to stick this in the upper right hand corner, the upper left hand corner actually. Let's add a drop shadow value of 2. Let's just undo what we just did here. There we go. Let's add a drop shadow value of 2. There we go. And I'm going to soften this up. Value of 4. Simply say apply. We're going to save this out here. And we'll just call this fun at the not zoo since we're not actually at a zoo here. And I'm not going to put that exclamation mark in here and I'm just going to say save. Okay. Once the title is into the preview window here. Let's just mark an endpoint. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to have this effect fade in. And again, I'm just going to add some dissolves in here just for the purposes, again, like I said, of rendering this out. So there we go. Dissolve and dissolve. Let's just hit render in out back up to clip down to render in out. Now, obviously, render in out that command works when you have a certain range selected in your timeline that has effects that might be able to be rendered. You can simply just mark that range, head on up to clip, head down to render in out, which I actually normally have mapped onto my uh, onto my composer window right here. It's just a really handy tool that I use all the time that I'm going to want to have quick access to. Okay, so here's what I have now. I have these three clips, I have a title, and I have these three effects. So let's talk about media management. Now, media management really starts with the clips that you've either imported or captured. Now, obviously, when you take a look at a clip in your bin right here, we'll use this one here as an example, Elephant's Nine. I'm just going to double click on it. We just talked about how this clip has a video and two audio tracks. 
Now inside of Media Composer and Symphony, it's simply represented by the clip icon here. Now I don't know how many tracks this item has until I actually come in and I hit the backspace key to delete. You'll see now I'm told that what I actually have is I have one master clip and I have three associated media files. So what exactly does that mean? Well, basically the master clip is just a piece of information. It's actually this little clip icon and everything that goes with it that sits in the bin that points to my media files folder where the actual physical media is. Now, where is that on my hard drive, you might ask? I'll just hit Windows E here. I'll come to the data drive. Inside of, let me just sort by name here, inside of Avid Media Files, MXF, number one, here's all the media files on my computer. There we go. Okay. Now you'll see that when I render stuff out or when I save things, import them, capture them, based on what drive I send things to, everything is put into one folder. You don't have to go searching through different folders. Everything is in one place. Okay. So let's talk about the actual tool that you're going to use to get in and see this media. It's called the media tool and you can actually find it by navigating up to tools and we're going to come right down here to media tool. Once I launch the media tool, you're going to be asked uh, a couple things first before you actually get in and see what's going on with the media in your project. First thing you're going to be asked is, okay, what media drives do you want the media tool to look at? Now, I could just select the Y drive, but you know, sometimes things get thrown into different drives. You might not be sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all the drives. Now, in most cases, when you're working and when you're doing cleanup on a project, you're going to want to select the current project that I happen to have selected right now. Now the next part is what throws people off. I now have three options. I have master clips, I have this thing called pre-compute clips, and I have media files. Well, we just talked about master clips. Master clips are obviously those clips that are inside your bin that point at the actual physical media inside of the Avid Media Files folder that I just showed you. Now, obviously, Media Files is just that. It's the video and the associated audio files, if there happens to be any, that once you double click on that master clip and hit play is what is played back for you to edit with. Now, what is this weird thing called pre-compute clips? Well, what pre-compute clips is, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn off media files for a second. And I'm going to select pre-compute clips. And I'm going to make sure that I have the current project selected. I'll just say current project, all drives, and I'm going to simply say go. Now, once I say go, you're going to see now that suddenly I have the untitled sequence 01. Well, look at that, untitled sequence 01. Dissolve 1, dissolve 2, dissolve 4, and dissolve 5. Well, take a look at that. What do I have in here? I actually have one, two, three. I actually have four dissolves in here. So there's actually a renegade dissolve. But what do I also have in here? Well, look at this. I have the title that I created inside of here as well. Well, that's what the pre-compute clips actually is. What I'm going to do is just close the media tool for a second. I'm going to head back to the main selection window. The pre-compute clips is any type of media that is rendered or generated via creating titles something very important to keep in mind. Now, where does this come into play? You might be thinking to yourself, well, let's say you, you know, happen to, for some reason, be running out of space. You know, you know, years ago, we talked about running out of space because we didn't have these, you know, three terabyte hard drives to edit off of and things like that. What I normally encourage people to do before they go in and start trying to delete media is, first of all, come into the media tool, select all your drives, select the current project, and select pre-compute clips only. Simply say OK. And then what I'll do is I'll come in, I'll select everything that's in there, everything. And what I'll do is I'll simply hit delete. Okay? It's going to tell me that right now that there the selected capture clips, there are none, but I have nine pre-compute video files. So what I'm going to do is simply say OK. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to say delete. Now, a couple things have happened here. You'll see down here inside my timeline, my dissolves have become unrendered. But in this case, not a big deal. My dissolves play back real time. But I do have a bigger problem. What's happened is, is that my title has gone offline. Well, now what do I do? Well, most people are going to right click. They're going to say edit title. They'll go in, make a, maybe a minor adjustment and then save it out again. But you don't need to do any of that. All you actually have to do is select the area or you know entire sequence in this case. What you then do is you're simply going to navigate up to clip 
And what you're going to do is you're going to come down to recreate title media. Now remember, we blew away all the pre-compute, so this is going to be fresh media that it's going to create. You may have now just freed up, you know, hundreds of gigabytes of space. So now all you have to do is just go back in and just recreate just the titles that you're using in your timeline by simply saying recreate title media. It's going to say, well, hold on. Where do you want to put this? I'll say on the Y drive. What resolution? Sure, DNX 145. And do you want it to be title media, matte media, or both? Now, in this case, Media Composer knows, or actually Symphony in this case knows, that it's simply a title. So all I'm going to do is simply say OK. And what's going to happen, you'll see, is that this title has quickly been regenerated. I've again, like I just said, freed up gigabytes and gigabytes of space and just created just that one little title that I'm using. OK, now let's talk about how we're going to clean up this project by deleting media as well. Because like I said, I'm done, I'm finished, this project is locked, I don't need anything else in this project. Now in most cases when I do my archives, you know, in this case I didn't use the entire clip here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to match frame here. You'll see that I only use part of this clip. But normally what I like to do is save the entire clip just in case for some reason the producer says, you know, can I, you know, slide this clip down three seconds, two seconds, slide it back six seconds, you know, seven seconds. I always like to have access to all of the media. I don't like to handcuff myself in any way, shape or form. So how would I get in and just save what I'm using in the sequence? Well, of course, we're going to head back to the media tool. But there's a couple of other commands that we're going to do in conjunction with the media tool to get in and just keep the media that we're using inside of our timeline. Okay, so let's head back to the media tool here for a second. I'm going to navigate up to tools right down here to media tool. Again, we're going to select all of our drives. I'm going to select the current project. And in this case, what I'm going to do is simply select everything. Master clips, pre-compute clips, media files, and I'm going to say go. You see, we have a few things in here, but the question is, what do I actually get in and delete? Well, here's how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my sequence. I'm going to select the sequence. Then I'm going to navigate up to bin and I'm going to come right down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Symphony that I want to select the media relatives. What it's basically doing now is that it's telling me what clips are relatives of this sequence that I had selected. So basically you'll see there is elephants number four, elephants number six, and elephants number nine, as well as the title. So there's elephants six, elephants four, elephants nine, and the title. Well, that sort of brings up a bit of a problem. Well, it's showing me what's in the sequence, but I want to delete everything that's not in the sequence. Ah, no problem. What I'm going to do is, again, with the media tool selected, I'm going to head back to bin, and you'll see that I have a great feature called, simply enough, reverse selection. All I'm going to do is say reverse selection. I'm simply going to say delete. It's telling me right now that I have seven video files and five audio files, fi actually five audio one files and five audio two files. So all I'm going to do is simply say goodbye. I'm going to say delete. Now all I have is exactly what I'm using inside of my timeline here. You'll see there's my title. And of course if I wanted to I could play this back with audio. A little too loud for my liking, but that's okay. And you'll see that over here inside of my bin, what I can do now is simply again navigate back up to bin and say show me the items that are offline. And you'll see these are the clips that have been deleted. So you'll see getting in and actually cleaning projects up is very simple if you put a little bit of thought into it and use the fantastic media tool that we have at our disposal in both Media Composer and in Symphony. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.